I've got some mail. I know I've got a couple of interesting things in here, so we'll check them out. Right, what's in this one? Make sure you give us a thumbs up in the video if you like it. I'll try and start saying that at the beginning of videos. How do we get into this thing? It's like a never ending. It's here somewhere. Here we go. So, yeah, definitely give us a, a thumbs up. Like the video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. All that sort of stuff. It's some capacitors. Now, this is like. The Element 14 bags now like the new RS bags, aren't they? You know, like now I'm buying capacitors from Element 14. Depends how urgently I want them. I think these were for a repair project I want to do, well, refurbishment project. That's a microfarad 16 volt. Yeah, there were. Um, I already have some of these, I think, but I was stocking up a little bit. And I think I needed some of this particular voltage. I had some other ones which are high voltage, I think. I think it's a bit more compact. So I've got some. Um, a couple of RF power meters which I want to refurbish and I just want to re recap them all and do videos on those so those will be coming up in the future. Right, I'll see what's in this one. It's a bit ironic really, someone's in my live stream right now talking about RAM problems with their MacBook. I'm using a RAM stick to cope and packages up. Thank you thing, yeah, okay, whatever. Switch my power supply. Fairly chunky one. Now, I purchased this for one particular project. I want to clear, I'm probably only going to use this once ever. <laughs> but we'll see, who knows. Set to create voltage. I'll show you that. Yeah, 230 volt, it's all good. And it's a mean volt power supply. And yeah, all specs on the front there. Close to that. So this is a 450 watt, 5 amp power supply. A uh, 5 volt power supply. I keep saying amps and bloody volts. The, it's what, uh, anyway. 450 watt, 5 volt power supply. As you can see, 75 amps max. The reason for this is that I need this to do a calibration on my DC electronic load. I started calibrating it the other day. And um, I discovered that I couldn't actually put enough current couldn't generate enough current to do the current calibrations and I'm halfway through the calibration and it's broken because I can't get enough current in order to do, do the top range. So I can measure voltage is fine, but a DC electronic load that can't measure current is pretty crap really. Um, yeah, so I needed to buy one of these just to do a calibration on that thing because I needed to be able to generate enough power. Now I've got all these buddy HP Agilent e a it was E3646 power supplies. I could have strung all those together in parallel, um, which would have given me, oh, I've forgotten now, so 8 amps a channel or something like that, so that's 48 amps maximum, but I'm not sure 48 amps is going to be enough. So um, I could have then strung them together, like something like this as well, which would chat a bit more in, but I do really want to have four power supplies running in parallel to try and do the calibration where I could just like, buy something like this and have done with it. So that's what I've gone with. So you will see a video in the future of me doing that calibration, or at least trying to do that calibration, assuming I can actually make it work again. I'm hoping. Mm. So open this one up, see what's in here. Oh, I think I actually know what's in here. And if you didn't click the thumbs up yet, do it. And and make sure you get the bell icon checked. So you get notifications, otherwise you won't hear about my new videos. As I say from time to time. You might have heard mention it. Oh, my RAM stick is letting me down. Just do the knife, okay? Right, peanuts. Isn't this me or is anybody else getting hungry?
Well, at least it's really well packaged. Get on for that. Try to drop any of these in my coffee, in my cup, which you too could own. You too could have one of these iFix stuff cups. It doesn't have to be green, you can choose your own colour. Okay, that's also net, that's fine. Should we go back to this? No. That country has good quality silicone. So, code says all oh eight six four eight six zero one one five. Here we go. Sig Gen synth bulb. This is out of the HP 8648B, or maybe other ones as well. I'm not quite sure if they're actually interchangeable or not. I wonder if they figure that out, maybe. So, I was doing repair on the on my 8648B, and my Signet Synth board is what I traced the full back to. And well, this was fairly cheap on eBay compared to some of the other units, so this was actually quite a good price. So, I went for this one, even though I, didn't, I wasn't sure if I was even going to need it. So I purchased this thinking, ah, uh, well, if I let it go now, then if I don't get it, and I do end up needing it, it's going to cost me a lot more to get a different one instead. Well, not a lot more, but, you know, an increase in cost. It's going to cost me, I don't know, 50% more or something like that. It's, it's the cheapest one on there. So I thought it's, it's, it's worth risking it. And then I ended up fixing the one I had, which I'll do a video on. Which you'll, you probably will see before you even see this video. Um, so that'll be out there. Watch out for that video. Is, is repairing this unit in my in my own one. So my 8648 is now working. I don't actually need this board, but I've already bought it. So I'm going to plug this into my unit and we'll test it out and actually see if it works. Um, if it doesn't, then I guess you've got another repair video. If it does, then oh well, I guess I could probably keep it spares maybe, or maybe resell it and try and get my money back. Um, but yeah, I'll get my unit up here and have a look. Okay, let's take the original board out, which is this one. I've actually left this in pieces waiting for this card to turn up so I can try it out. Put the replacement board in, make sure it's actually the right way up inside the case in case, in case someone's been messing with it. And interestingly, it's got a, a black pin mark over here. So maybe someone's been messing with this. We'll see. If it goes bang, at least I've got something else to fix, I suppose. There's always a risk of putting something in which you're not quite sure of its past, you know. It's plugged in. Right. Let's see if it gives an error. Right, ready? Let's see what happens. See if it might get smoke. Update the cow file. If in malt. 502. Interesting. What does that mean? I've got absolutely no idea. Let's reboot it again, see if it does the same thing again. Might have to look that up. Fine, no errors. Okay, so it must just be because these balls have a, a calibration information built into them, they're built in cows. Alright, so there's a whole bunch of electronics on there which you can't see, but maybe you can just see it in there. But there's some chips and stuff in there, and that you have serial communications to the main board. And they store their own cal data on them, so it must be transferring the cal data from that card into the main board, so it knows how to adjust itself for that board. That's my guess anyway. This is just a bright little bit on here. There you go, it's a bit better. So let's plug this thing into a generator, well, a... Um, Analyzer, and we'll see if it actually works. Hope it does. It seems to be anyway. We'll try it out. All right, so here we go. Let's give it a try out. So I've got the unit preset to 20 megahertz. Now because my Roland Swartz 
its last frequency is 10 megahertz as large as it can go so that's going to be right on that left edge we'll turn it on and it has a signal which is fine that's great so let's do markers check the peak and we're getting 1 dBm I'm actually set at 0 dBm which is interesting so it's up slightly higher than it should be we have actually the uh, SIGGEN synth, SIG synth card or something else I can't even pronounce it Whether that's the SIGGEN synth card or something else, I don't know Anyway, let's try 50 MHz There we go, this just popped over very slightly Check the peak 1.6 dBm So it's interesting the way it's um, higher than normal Ok, let's try 200 MHz And see it's moved over here, check the peak and there we go, 200 megahertz and minus 0.6, which is more like what I'd be expecting to see. So it's interesting. Okay, let's do 500. Now it actually has like bands on the synthesizer, so it will go, I think it's 0 to 249 megahertz is one band. So we've already tested that band. Then we've got 249 to 500 is another band. Then, or 501 or something like that. Then 501 up to 1 gigahertz is another band. And then 1 gigahertz to 1.5 and 1 gigahertz, or is it 1, 1, 1 gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, I think it is, is the next band. Something like that. So it's in a few different bands and it works. That's on 500. So if I do 450, I'm definitely inside the next band. Alright, so that's fine. 1.7 dBm or minus 1.7, that's fine. And let's do uh, 800 megahertz, so it's definitely inside the next band. Minus 1.4 dBm, that's fine. And then we'll do. 1.1 gigahertz, which is definitely inside the next band. Minus 2.7 dBm. I'm going to get more loss in this cable at these high frequencies, so I'm not surprised by that at all. And let's do 1.8 gigahertz. Yep, minus 3.3. So that synthesizer seems to be working absolutely fine. That's good. So it didn't give any errors. Let's do actual 2 gigahertz as well, the right to the very top. There we go, 2 gigahertz, minus 4.2 dBm. Now I'm pretty sure I won't go any higher if I try and force it. No, that's it. So that's it. It works, excellent. So that was good, so it was a pretty good win. Have a, I now have a spare board for this thing, which I, I don't know if I'll sell it or not, I may sell it. Um, we'll see how we go. I'd, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to repair this board ever again. I'm probably going to sell this unit anyway. I bought it as a project. I don't really need it. I've already got two other signal generators, so I don't actually need this board or this unit. So I probably will end up selling this thing. Because I did buy it just as a project. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. But anyway, at least that, that board works okay. So that's great. I got that for a good price. So I'm happy about that. But just now, I because I fixed the original one, I didn't actually need it, which is a bit of a shame. So in a, in a way I wasted some money, but at least I got it for a good price. So yeah, I need to go and get the money back now. So I'm going to use that money to buy more things for YouTube videos to make more repair videos on bits of test gear. It never ends really, does it? Never ends. There's no end in sight. It's just going to keep going forever and ever and ever. More videos. Catch you later.